What's going on guys, Brent031, appreciate you guys tuning in. So recently my YouTube channel hit 500,000 subscribers. In celebration of that, I reached out to several guys that are buddies of mine that also have YouTube channels, and we came up with a gear giveaway contest, okay? It was a huge hit, I had 30 something entries for this gear giveaway contest, and in a nutshell, those guys had to uh, do a gear layout inspection video of all the stuff they were gonna be taking on this notional mission that we outlined in the uh, contest announcement. And uh, it was just phenomenal. Guys did a fantastic job. And uh, ultimately what ended up happening is myself, along with the other judges, we racked and stacked everybody, came to consensus over a system of uh, you know judging. And then uh, you know we put those guys in order one through eight in terms of the, the winners. So just a great, great contest, guys. A lot of fun. At the very end of that, I had several people reach out to me and ask me like, Brent, what would you have taken on that very same mission that you outlined in your brief? Okay, so thought this would be a great uh, video opportunity, guys. I have all my gear out here that I would have taken on the exact same mission that a lot of you participated in the contest with. Okay, so I thought you'd get, I'd give you my two cents, uh, some of the stuff that I would take and what I was ultimately looking for uh, while judging your guys' entries, okay? Um, so if you're unfamiliar with the contest, essentially three day long recon surveillance mission, you're observing and watching an enemy used trail, okay? This is a near peer threat along with a guerrilla force attached to them, okay? So very similar capabilities that you know we have, they have, all right? In terms of like optics and th things of that nature uh, and weapon systems. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. The uh, terrain and weather, arduous terrain up in the mountains, the uh, weather conditions were low 30s at night and then uh, low 60s during the day and then there was a chance of rain during at least one of those days. So it was going to force you to take cold weather equipment as well as rain gear. Uh, so just, you know, cold wet environment, one of the most dangerous to operate in guys. And uh, nonetheless, I got everything laid out here. I'm going to give you guys an insight on what I would have taken on that very same mission. So thanks for watching and let's dive into this. All right, guys, so first and foremost, I have everything laid out that's gonna be on the uh, the body. However, I have my cold weather shit laid out right now also, but during the insertion phase of this mission, obviously I'm not gonna be wearing the cold weather stuff. That's gonna be packed away. I'll get into where I want that stuff packed away later, but I just wanted to lay this out to show you guys what goes on the body, okay? So first and foremost, camouflage pattern. I chose M81 Woodland Camouflage Pattern. It's, uh, it's a solid tried and true camouflage pattern. The, uh, the pictures and stuff that I'll show you guys, I thought M81 Woodland would uh, perform very well. And then uh, some of the pictures I'll show you for that particular environment uh, were up in the same location that uh, I did the SEER challenge in and I wore M81 Woodland Camouflage there and I thought it performed fantastic, okay? So M81 Woodland Camouflage is what I'll be utilizing. I'll be wearing uh, BDU style utilities. These are from Helicon. Uh, they are not uh, your standard BDU cut. They're a little bit different, like they have uh, pockets on the sleeves. Um, you know, good feature when you have all your, your equipment and stuff on your torso, okay? But this isn't a combat shirt because I'm not wearing a uh, plate carrier or any type of body armor. This is a reconnaissance mission and I want it to be lightweight, okay? So no body armor, no plate carrier, no Kevlar, none of that stuff, okay? Just utilities and uh, web equipment, which we'll get into later. I will be wearing a boonie hat for my uh, light cover. Um, undergarments, OD Green Silkies, okay? If you guys don't know, Silkies increase combat effectiveness by 25%, tried and true. Um, as far as footwear, these are 100% uh, wool, well, merino wool socks, okay? These are good. Um, just merino wool has always uh, served me well and just a fantastic, anything wool is just fantastic in terms of uh, cold weather shit, okay? Uh, knee pads, these are knee pad inserts. We'll go into these uh, cami trousers. Um, I'll be utilizing that instead of having exterior knee pads. Boots, Marine Corps issue rat boots. I wore these during a the sear challenge up in the mountains. They are designed for that rugged terrain. Um, it's in the name, guys, a rat. Rugged all-terrain freaking boots, okay? Uh, these are fantastic boots for being up in the mountains and just that arduous terrain up there. As you guys can see, they're reinforced in the toe and in the heel. Um, so those will be good. I got uh, these Swiss military surplus leggings. I wore these again during the SEER challenge. They're fantastic to provide extra ankle support as well as protection to your shins. And uh, you know, just when you're beating through that rough terrain up there, that rough bush, they just give you that extra protection around the shins, keep you getting fucked up though, like that, okay? They'll also help keep uh, you know, water and stuff from getting in into your boots and getting in your, uh, your socks and you know, making your feet wet and everything else. 
which in that cold, wet environment, hey, that's that's freaking money, okay? Because if you get your feet wet and it's freezing like that, uh, you're in for a bad day. Underneath the camis also, I'm gonna have a uh, my base layer. So this is just kind of like a, you know, that first layer, top and bottom. I won't be wearing the bottom upon insertion. That will have to be put on later, okay? But this is just kind of a like a moisture wicking, that first layer that you have on that kind of pulls that moisture and pushes it out for that cold weather environment. Uh, moving over here. So standard Nomex flight gloves, that will be my standard glove that I have on when that temperature drops at night. These are intermediate cold weather gloves. They are, uh, they are Gore-Tex lined, I believe. So, you know, water resistant um, and, you know, will provide that warmth, extra warmth for when the, the temperatures drop at night. Uh, but overall, I'll be wearing the uh, Nomex flight gloves most of the time. So additional cold weather, okay? So when those temperatures drop to low 30s, and it's raining, <laughs> it's gonna get cold, okay? What am I gonna be wearing? Well, under, right above this base layer, when it start, when those temperatures start to drop, I'm gonna have a standard Marine Corps issue uh, woolly pulley, all right? 100% wool uh, service sweater, and uh, it's just always been a fantastic piece of gear for me that I've uh, always, always loved and appreciated, okay? And then uh, if I need it a little bit extra, in my butt pack is this uh, grid fleece, and this will go above this, all right? And uh, again, when those temperatures drop, uh, that that will be sufficient for uh, for warming layers underneath my rain layer, okay? So if it really gets cold and uh, it's raining, okay? If you get wet and cold, you're fucked, okay? So you gotta stay dry. So you're gonna have to have a Gore-Tex layer, all right? So I got a Gore-Tex top and bottom. I have these uh, M1950 suspenders to help keep the uh, Gore-Tex pants up by the belt loops. If you guys have ever worn uh, those old school, you know, woodland uh, Gore-Tex bottoms, uh, they all they have are belt loops and they have a tendency of, of falling down, okay? Uh, so I just wear those uh, suspenders to help keep them up. For cold weather, I've got a watch cap, a neck gaiter. Um, I've got my sniper veil, which will be worn during the day. Also can be used, used to uh, plus up the, uh, the hide that we're gonna build later. And then if I need it, I have a 100% uh, wool scarf, okay, for, uh, again, those colder temperatures when, the, when they drop and uh, it's raining and it's just miserable. <laughs> so that is essentially the uh, utility uniform and the cold weather items that I have going on this mission. All right, guys, so picking up with uh, what's worn on the person. Now I've got individual gear laid out as well as individual weapons, so let's talk about that. So starting with the weapon, I've got an AR-15 style platform. Uh, so just that M4 style platform is what I'd go for, okay? Um, obviously it's civilian Lego, 16 inches, but if it was a uh, military, you know, it'd be a 14.5 inch barrel M4. Uh, that's what I'd roll with this particular mission set, okay? What do I have on here? I've got a Trigicon ACOG, four power uh, fixed optic. And, um, you know, I can passively aim with my MBGs with that particular optic. That has the Aurora ACSS reticle in it. Awesome reticle allows me to range estimate on uh, targets and everything else. A lot of capabilities with that particular uh, reticle. I've done a video on it if you're interested. Got a uh, you know PEC, PEC 15 so I could uh, engage with IR laser if need be. Uh, one magazine loaded in the rifle. I will come back to it, but my combat load here for uh, magazines, I'm going to go with seven. All right, combat load of uh, five, five, six magazines. So one in the weapon and then the, uh, the the rest will be carried on the person. Six total magazines on the person. Uh, let's go to the web gear now. So right here, I got a Camelback holder. Well, let me talk about the gear itself. So I've got a, a brand new Eagle Industries um, style uh, web gear here. It kind of has H straps. So it's, it reminds me a lot of Alice, you know, tried and true Alice type setup. Uh, I'm gonna be taking this up to Winter Forge. I wanted to try it out here after setting everything up, I think it's gonna work out really well, okay? Uh, but H-style style, uh, suspenders on the back has a Molly panel, which allowed me to attach this um, Camelback holder to it, okay? Inside the Camelback holder, I've got a three liter Camelback. All right, so three liter Camelback, that's all, that will be my water for moving, you know, while on the move, suck from the hose. Um, I tend to like that, that way I'm not drinking out of my canteens, you know, drinking them down, it starts making swishing noises while I'm moving, okay? Uh, as you're drinking from a Camelback, it's sucking that water out, 
And then, um, you know, if I need to put more water in it, I'll pull from the canteens. That way I can dump the whole contents of the canteen into the Camelback. And again, I don't have to worry about uh, swishing water. Now, where Camelbacks have uh, their shortfall is in cold weather, okay? Now, we'll get down into the 30s at night on this mission. However, I still have my canteens. And then uh, as long as I can keep those canteens from freezing, uh, maybe keeping them inside my utilities, uh, if it, assuming it doesn't get below freezing, then uh, we should be good to go. But nonetheless, I got my uh, Camelback. Uh, inside this Camelback holder, I also have uh, this cut down air panel. This is from the Hidden Woodsman. Just a small uh, kind of VS-17 style air panel that I'll keep in there for you know, signaling uh, purposes. You know, maybe I gotta link up with another unit or get extracted. You know, I could use this for signaling. So that's kept inside the uh, Camelback holder, so it's always, always there. Uh, also inside the Camelback holder, if I don't have my ruck on, I'm gonna have, this is my stand-in for my PRC uh, 152 that I briefed in the mission, okay? Uh, so I'll have my radio and I can stick it in there. I know that will work because this is uh, the same exact Camelback holder that I had in Afghanistan and uh, it worked there, okay? So that 152 will work in conjunction with my Camelback inside this Camelback holder, and that way I can just run the antenna out of it, and then I can uh, route this comm setup through these uh, shoulder harnesses. And then, um, so that's the Camelback holder. Let's go over to the uh, left side strap here. I have one readily accessible tourniquet strapped to the uh, harness. I also have a grenade pouch, so I'll have one M67 fragmentation grenade on this uh, side of the harness. The opposite side of the harness, I have another grenade pouch, another M67 fragmentation grenade. What am I gonna use grenades for, guys? This is gonna be used for breaking contact, okay? If I gotta get out of get Dodge, you know, RNS team don't wanna be fighting the enemy, they're probably gonna be larger than us, there's only gonna be two of us, but that HE is gonna be coming handy for throwing those grenades and breaking contact with uh, the enemy. Okay, so that's where uh, grenades really come in handy. All right, moving down to the lower part of the uh, the belt here. So starting off on my, uh, this would be my right side. I'm gonna have one double magazine pouch. So two 5.56 five, uh, M4 magazines here. Next to that I have a, this is essentially just a general purpose pouch that I've made into my MVG bag. But I've got my uh, dual MVGs over here. All right, those are AG, AGM, I've done a, a video over those but I'll have my dual binos on this mission, okay? And you guys can see the uh, lanyard system I rigged up. It's just a D-ring hooked up to some 550 cord. When I, when I need to take these binos off, I just disconnect that, and then uh, there we go. And then when I wanna put it back on the pouch, I just hook it back up to the uh, 550 cord. So that's what goes into this uh, pouch, and I could probably squeeze a couple other things in there if I need to. Um, right here, I've got a full size. This is the Ontario Knife Company Marine Fighter, I believe is what they call this. I've used this at uh, several One Shepherd semesters, and it's uh, just been a great, fantastic general purpose utility knife. So that's a good knife, a lot of experience with it, using it in, uh, like I said, One Shepherd, Winter Forge, and everything else. Down here below in the sheath is uh, a Gerber, and uh, you know, multi tool comes in handy a lot especially when you have to you know, fix optics or weapon-related equipment or in, anything along those lines in the field. Right above that, I have a compass pouch attached to the web gear. Uh, just you know, a standard compass always comes in handy. Right next to that, I have a um, standard one-quart canteen. Also in this pouch is a canteen cup. All right, I will come back to the butt pack here in a second. Opposite side, another one quart canteen in this, uh, this pouch here, as well as the USGI heater. Um, dump pouch, nothing's in the dump pouch right now. So, uh, you know, I'll probably have it rolled up when I'm wearing it if, when it's not employed and it's, you know, standard dump pouch uh, <laughs> manner, but dump pouch is there. Opposite side, two more double M4 uh, magazine pouches, okay, so four more magazines, 5.56 five, magazines. All right, let's move on to the butt pack. So in the butt pack, on one side, I have a, you know, an IFAC. In that IFAC is just general first aid equipment, as well as another tourniquet. 
On the opposite side is a smoke grenade pouch. So I got one M18 smoke. Where is that gonna come into play? Well, two purposes I can think of. One, uh, throwing it out there in addition to the HE, help you know build up that smoke to obscure and cover our uh, egress as we get out of Dodge if we had to break contact. Or we're getting picked up by a helo, got to throw smoke, need something to, uh, maybe in addition to air panel or if we can't get the air panel out there, throw the smoke to uh, give a visual reference to a bird to help get us out of Dodge. Okay, so what's going inside our butt pack? Um, move over here. So inside the butt pack is a waterproofing bag. The contents of that waterproofing bag are uh, Marine Corps issue grid fleece. All right, so a little bit uh, warming layer for my upper body. I got a watch cap and neck gaiter. I've got one pair of extra merino wool socks. Again, that all goes inside this waterproofing bag to help keep those things dry in the event of rain. Also in the butt pack, got a Gore-Tex top, rifle cleaning gear. This is my land nav kit. So inside this kit is just uh, you know, a sig signaling mirror, uh, map pens. I've got a you know, magnifying glass, Sharpie, stuff to facilitate you know, uh, reading maps. Also got a little uh, rape whistle in here in the case that uh, you know, need to make liaison with another unit or whatever the case may be. Um, got my Ranger beads. May or may not attach those to my gear, we'll see. Probably we'll, we'll attach those somewhere on the gear uh, for land nav purposes. Um, let's see, also inside the butt pack, one emergency chow, okay? So this is essentially one chow uh, in the event of emergency. I'll always keep that in there. It'll probably be the last one I eat. That's the, that's the one, if I get separated from my pack and I need to pull a chow, uh, that's, that's always gonna be on me, all right? If I gotta drop that ruck to make a run for it, I'll have at least one MRE on my person. This also in the, uh, the butt pack is just a utility pouch. Uh, just a general purpose pouch and inside that general purpose pouch i have um, a pen flare so pen flares again for emergency uh, signaling i have uh, four packs of caffeinated gum this stuff's great take it to one shipper all the time use it i just it, it's great one piece of gum has a i think it's 100 milligrams of uh, caffeine so it really keeps you awake at night without having to you know cook up coffee and stuff like that okay and trust me i love my coffee but on this recon mission i'm not going to risk uh you know firing up anything like that okay I'll, also in here i got my cami paint i've got some black electrical tape 550 cord i've got some uh, mini bungees what are they not going to use these for well when i pull out my pack here you guys will see i have a, a mini uh or a small um cami netting that we're going to use to build our hide i also have a lighter um some a waterproof case for some matches I've got an IR strobe, a few, a couple chem lights with an IR chem light. I've got some extra batteries. These are all the different batteries for the, the stuff that's on me. So I got CR123s for uh, my PEC. I've got uh, some double A's for my nods. I've got um, triple A's for uh, the headlamp and that should be it. So I believe that's everything that's gonna be inside the butt pack. Almost forgot also, uh, this is a, a Marine Corps um, digital woodland tarp. I'm gonna put that at the bottom of the butt pack on these straps. Um, this is gonna be needed to help build our hide because it is supposed to rain. So I wanna use this as the base of our overhead cover and I'll have a cami netting on top of that. So we'll talk about that some more here in a little bit. So moving over here, stuff that's um, on the camis themselves, okay? So my right pocket, shoulder pocket, got my headlamp. On my left shoulder pocket, I have just a, a notepad with some pens, and this is just taking notes. You know, again, this is a recon and surveillance mission. I'm gonna need to uh, annotate what I'm seeing. So when I go to report it, it's uh, you know clear and concise and everything else. I'm also gonna have a, a pack of this caffeinated gum on my person. On my left wrist, I'm gonna have, uh, if you guys never seen these, these are just little, um, kind of like an NFL quarterback style of, uh, thing where they can have plays and stuff, but you can keep little information on your mission important stuff that you can keep on your wrist readily available, ready for quick reference, uh, brevity codes, things like that. Got a watch and a watch band again on my left wrist. Uh, on my right wrist, I'm going to have a uh, Garmin Fortrex GPS. All right, in my right cargo pocket, 
I'm gonna have my map, all right? So the map of the AO and uh, other stuff annotated pertaining to the mission. Um, obviously, if there's a situation where, you know, GPS can be compromised or the enemy has that type of capability, I'm probably not gonna, you know, run with this, but um, if we're not, if we have a, a lower, you know, tier type threat uh, where I can get away with that, then I will wear the uh, you know the Garmin GPS because those are that's a great little tool, readily accessible, having it on your wrist right there. So I think I covered everything out on display. So again, just to recap: two M67 fragmentation grenades, seven magazines, one smoke grenade. I think that is a, a pretty decent uh, combat load for our mission. And uh, yes, you know you want to be light, but at the same time. I need you need some ass. If you got to get out of dodge, you gotta you gotta get that HE out there. You gotta get that smoke out there. You gotta put some rounds down range to be able to break that contact. Uh, keep the enemy's head down to allow your guys to to pop smoke and get the fuck out of dodge. So let's move on. All right, guys. So now I'm gonna talk about what's going in my rucksack. So this Crossfire DG3 ruck, which I've also done a video on, uh, I think will be the perfect size for this particular mission. So um, let's start with the exterior of the pack. So I'm running a, uh, a two-quart canteen on the outside of my, my uh, pack here. So essentially I have all my water on my person. I got those two one-quart canteens, um, and then I got that three-liter Camelback, and then I have this two-quart two canteen right here. I think that should be more than enough for me to survive and operate for those three, sing those three days. The reason I know that is because I've done one, one Shepherd FTXs where I'm very active, guys. Um, not quite the same mission set as this where I'm going to be static observing a trail uh, But I've been able to do those one shepherd missions where I'm pretty static and I roughly go through that much water in that three-day time period So I think this is going to be the just the right amount of water for for me. It's at least during this mission. So uh, Two court on the the one side on the opposite side. I'm gonna have an e-tool again I think some of the stuff will get spread loaded amongst the, the two of us. However, for the purposes of this, I'm gonna show that I'm the one carrying it, right? E-tool, and the reason for that is we gotta build a hide, and then when we shit and, shit and piss, guys, we're not going outside of our hide very far, right? We're gonna have to shit and piss pretty damn close, so we're definitely gonna to need to dig cat holes, and uh, you just can't shit and piss right there on the open, because what's gonna happen is, you know, you're gonna have freaking uh, you know shit paper or you know whatever the case may be right there. You're gonna be smelling that the whole time, and the enemy might smell it as well. So definitely a need for uh, cat holes, and uh, definitely gonna need at least one guy in the team to have an e-tool, in my opinion. Okay. I also have a, a pouch right here. This can double as a radio pouch, but what I'm using it for right now is I have a, uh, a foldable saw. Okay. So these are good for uh, you know building that hide, cutting branches. Um, cutting fields of fire in the defense and things like that but uh you know for constructing our hide uh these are these are going to be invaluable so i can put that in this pouch right here and it'll sit right there on the outside of the pouch okay right next to the e-tool e-tool folds in here you've also got uh, these exterior pouches that uh hold or excuse me that you can put stuff in on the ruck but i've got the uh i've got the e-tool with alice clips as well as these straps securing it down and then it sits inside that, that pocket built into the DG3 rut. Um, so that's pretty much it for the exterior of the pack. Internal components, so sleeping system. Gotta have a sleeping system, guys. It's gonna get down in the low 30s. It's gonna be wet, okay? If Again, if you get cold and wet, you're fucked in that type of environment. So you gotta have at least a, a bivy sack, okay? Bivy sack, a sleeping bag, a poncho liner is what I'm, I'm running. A, you know, you could possibly um, hot rack your sleeping bag. However, you tend to run in trouble when you get in, into that, that realm. Um, so in any event, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take this, okay? Um, I would say both guys should, as a good practice, both of you should take your sleeping systems. But if you didn't absolutely have to cut weight, you know, you could look at possibly hot racking uh, you could do a ranger roll, guys, but it's again, it's getting down in the low 30s. It's wet, so if your your poncho liner gets wet from the rain, again, you're fucked. So, I recommend a bivy sack and then um, a green bag at minimum. So that's the sleeping system I'm running. Isomat, 
Now, why is this going to be important? Because a lot of dudes tend to omit their isomat. Guys, that ground is going to suck that heat right out of you. Okay, so in this cold, wet environment, uh, especially when you're going to be in the prone a lot, I recommend having an isomat that you can lay on it. It puts that insulating layer between your body and the ground so that ground does not pull that heat out of you and uh, make your life extra miserable. And uh, again, cold, wet environment, very dangerous, okay? Um, I use this waterproofing bag to hold my sleeping system, okay? So I stuff my sleeping system in there, and then it's got one of those uh, vacuum seals, you know, push the air out and make this even smaller. Uh, let's see. Contents of the ruck. So I've got another waterproofing bag, and this stuff's going in here. So this is my um, uh, polypro bottoms, and then I've got my uh, Marine Corps service sweater. I've got an extra pair of socks. So that's going to be a total of three socks for this mission. And then I've got that, uh, that wool scarf. I've got my intermediate cold weather gloves. I've also got a helmet. So this is just a bump helmet. This is not offering any type of ballistic protection. This is lightweight. Uh, and essentially the only purpose for this is to hold my MVGs, guys. Um, with the four-point suspension and stuff on this bump helmet, it's a lot better than having some sort of, uh, you know, skull cap or something along those lines on. Okay, so that is the only purpose for this lightweight bump helmet is to hold my MVG. So that's why that's here. Observation equipment. I'm going to have a, a set of Steiner Marine binos. These are fantastic binos. I've used these for years. Taking them to one shepherd, they're just fantastic. Clear glass, great military tried and true uh, piece of equipment here. Uh, I've got an AGM thermal, okay, thermal uh, equipment. Hey, freaking uh, modern day warfare, right? Thermal, it's gonna serve two purposes for me. One, it's gonna help me, uh, you know, hopefully detect the enemy. And then two, you know, we can always look at our position from different angles with that thermal to make sure that our thermal signature is uh, better masked. That's one of the reasons why I'm taking the uh, the Marine Corps tarp is we're going to put that tarp over us, help you know with some standoff, help uh, reduce our thermal layer from you know drones and things of that nature. And then uh, on top of that, I'm taking this caminetting here, and uh, this is just an old surplus Italian military caminetting. And uh, believe it or not, it's actually pretty lightweight, even though it's you know burlap and uh, netting. But I find that this will be the perfect size for the mission. All right, so I'll put, we'll put the, uh, the tarp down and then we'll put this on top of it and then we can add natural vegetation as well. And then I'll use those small bungees I showed you guys earlier to help secure those in place in, the, uh, in our hive. And then you guys saw how this all folds up. Just goes back in the bag, which the bag is attached to the net and then uh, you know, somewhat compact, and I can have this either inside the ruck or outside, depending on how much uh, space I have. Uh, range finder here, this is a Leupold range finder. Just need to know that range in case we need to call in a uh, you know, fire mission or you know, airstrike, something along those lines. Also guys, I got this uh, little Pelican case here, and inside this Pelican case are just some external uh, rechargeable batteries uh, to help recharge my uh, thermal scope, because obviously the thermal is gonna get used quite a bit while in the uh, hide. This right here, this is just a waterproof pack cover. So you guys can see how small it is. But you come out, it's essentially a poncho, a poncho for your pack. All right, so once the, uh, the pack is on the deck, or you know if it's raining while we're moving, I can just throw this over my pack and uh, it'll waterproof it. Because for this, it's a, like I said, a poncho for the ruck itself. So just a, uh, Waterproof pack cover, guys. That's all it is. So how much chow am I taking to the, the fight here? So I have one chow in my web gear, which you guys already saw. I've got three more chows here. And then I have what's called a first strike meal, which first strike meal is a 24-hour ration, okay? So this big bag of MRE right here has enough chow in it to sustain operations for 24 hours. Now, that probably actually has more MRE or more contents in it than I am actually taking in terms of, I'm planning for two MREs a day. Okay, so like these two right here, these two field strip chows are one day's worth of chow. This one, in addition to my one in my butt pack is one day's worth of chow. And then I had that first strike meal. So that first strike meal is 24 hours. So that takes for one day. But again, 
Um, typically in the military, they give you three MREs for one day. Well, that's excess in my opinion, all right? Uh, you do burn more calories when you're in the field and on the move. Uh, you do burn more calories in a cold environment. However, we, you know, food weighs a lot, all right? We gotta cut down. So typically speaking, like in one shepherd uh, training semesters, we do two MREs a day. Um, and that's, in my opinion, that has been sufficient to operate. So uh, anything more than that tends to be excessive. But with that said, this 24 hour ration meal, I guarantee you there's probably a little bit more uh, chow in there than what normally is, is offered in two MREs. So I'll have a little bit more extra just because we're in that cold weather environment um, and we've got some physical uh, aspect to this mission with the, you know, the movement to the actual hide itself. So um, the reason some of these are taped and some of these are just in a bag, I'm going to take one MRE sleeve, all right, one MRE sleeve, and then all my trash is going to go into here. All right, so the rest of the stuff is field stripped, and then I'll have one MRE sleeve so that when I'm done eating these, these chows, I just take the trash and throw it in there. By the end of this, I'll have just one full MRE sleeve with my trash. You hump it in, you hump it out. So that's that. Um, baby wipes, you know, wipe an ass, uh, ballistic eyewear, so, you know, sunglasses, clear, eye pro if needed. Hygiene gear. Um, so usually I take the smaller gold bottom, um, foot powder bottle. However, I didn't have it. <laughs> so I had the, the slightly bigger one, but know that, you know, if, if I, if I would have been a little bit more prepared, I would have had the smaller one, right? That's what I would have taken. Uh, chapstick, small thing, of tooth, uh, paste, and then, uh, some, some moist, um, the hell you call it the hydrating cream for your hands. Yeah. So in a cold weather, obviously you guys, your hands start getting cracked and, and you get pretty miserable. Okay. So just bare essentials for a hygiene kit. Um, I think I already covered uh, shit paper wipes. That's important. And what else we got? I got two, um, bungee cords here and these would just go on the exterior of the pack. If I need to strap anything down uh, or also once we get into our hide, those can be used to help secure that uh, cabinet netting or that tarp, whatever the case may be. So that should be it, guys. I'm gonna pack this all up. I'll put it on so you guys can see it in action. All right, guys, so a couple things I wanna mention. So all the contents that are going inside the pack are in there right now. Um, in the top lid here, I'm keeping my range finder, uh, shit wipes. I got the uh, waterproof pack cover. I've got my ballistic eye pro. And then I uh, also have my thermal in the lid. Okay, so stuff that I need that's readily accessible is going to be in there. Um, just going to finish up. I've got all I got left is my helmet, and then I've got to bound up my cami netting, and I'm going to secure that to the outside of the pack in some fashion here in a second. All right, guys, so here's my final pack all packed up. So um, I ended up using the bungee cords for the uh, isomat on the bottom, and then I've got the helmet as well as the cami netting inside the helmet underneath and secured with the top lid of this ruck. So ruck's all packed up. There it is, uh, radio's inside the ruck, and then handset, handset is just clipped onto the uh, shoulder strap so that it can communicate on the move while we're moving to the location that we're gonna do our, uh, our hide in. So uh, just again, recap, e-tool on one side, as well as the uh, folding saw. Other side's a uh, two-core canteen, and then uh, that's it, that's it for the, uh, the ruck.